The ban on the operation of motorcycles and tricycles across Lagos State takes effect tomorrow, the 1st of February, 2020. And the People's Democratic Party demand the resignation of President Mohamed Buhari by protesting. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ock. The Lagos State government has banned the operation of motorcycles, also called Okada, and tricycles, also known as Keke, across the state. It was stated that the decision was taken after an assessment by the government revealed that the casualty figures arising from their use are scary. However, many Nigerians have expressed displeasure on this development and also the short timing as the ban is set to take effect from the 1st of February 2020, barely four days after the decision was made. Now, joining me to discuss this this evening, I have political analyst Chuka Ihono and also Dami Adebayo. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me this evening. Well, good evening. Thank you. Thank you for making it. Now, let's get talking about this. Now, this move like this, it's it's not the first time we're hearing about this. We had it during the administration of Baba Tunde Fashola. What is the difference this time around? What, what, what are we expecting differently this time around? Is this more of a ban or a restriction? Mm. Ihono, let's I, start with you. I, th I think, I mean... It's a restriction because there are roads that they are allowed to, to climb. climb. Yes. But, um, and everybody uses the word ban, maybe because of the severity of the, of the, of the action. Yes. Um, and it's happened before. In fact, you missed out on body. He too tried it. Everybody, yes. every, every governor has banned it, really. So I don't know what this announcement really means. It actually makes people look a bit silly. Yes. But while we're at it, um, it's funny they're banning it now after so much. Sorry, I wanted to cut your thoughts. Yes. Should, should it be an outright ban or <laughs> restriction as it is to uh, first, certain oh, local, oh, localities? Oh, yes. First of all, yeah. you, 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 are, you are more or less asking me where I stand. Yes. Do please. I really want Okada's banned or not? And the answer is that it would be very silly for me to say that Okada should be banned, really, because we're not ready. And in spite of these casualties and all that that they talk about, and they've now added on security, because everything now is about security. Yes. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I mean, the federal government really has lost its grip on security. And so that everything now is open, uh, what do they call it? It's, um, it's, it's, it's okay to touch anything you like now in the name of security. The, the casualties uh, from Gokada and these other startup companies um, are a lot less or even almost zero compared with the ones from your local uh, Okada riders, yes. which suggests that if this thing is properly organized and you know, good money is put in it, good thinking, it, it can work while we're looking for something better. Admittedly, it's not really nice to move yes. around a big city like Lagos. That, 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 it seems to be like we're seeing a re renaissance of, well, like you rightly said, Amber Day, Fashola. What's your take on this? What was your reaction when you heard this? So I see it as one of the examples or one of the case studies of us living in a weak state as well. Not just on a state level, but on a federal level as well. Right. And the general idea is bad laws don't get implemented. Mm -hmm. We see that happen across industries. We saw it with the original petroleum industry bill and with this one as well. And it's one of the advantages that we've enjoyed as well, which is the fact that if a law is bad, it doesn't get enforced. It gets enforced partially yeah, and right. it doesn't, you know, live on as well. So I see this coming and again, it's another short term knee jerk reaction to I mean, insecurity and to, obviously the health challenges obviously, obviously suffered by people as well. But the fact that there is no long-term action into this as well, I mean, I trust you for the fact that the blue line hasn't come on as well. It's eight years behind schedule as well. So yeah. we see these things um, happen and um, we just see, so the first time I saw it, I thought it was a knee-jerk reaction. I yes. thought it wasn't going to be a solution. And I don't think it takes us anywhere further to where we want to go as a city as well. And instead it's um, going to put in a lot of pain as well. You might argue that it's short term. I can't argue against that, but again, it's still a lot of pain as well. And I don't see um, the level of empathy required to make a decision of this magnitude from the government as well. All right. Well, we'll go for a short break right now. When we come back, we had a discussion earlier on with the Lagos State former Commissioner for Transport, um, Lawasin. We'll take a few of those clips and Plus Politics will be back. had already restricted the use of what we call Okadas, motor bicycles, for commercial 
transportation along the major routes that have been identified. It's in our laws. Mm -hmm. So someone did not come, wake up one day, and um, decided to ban Okadas. That's, it. That's, that, that's not what's happening. Our laws have restricted the use of Okadas on major roads. It's just the failure of past administration to enforce it that makes it appear as if this is a draconian uh, administration. That's not the case at all. I think that uh, the manner in which even the announcements were made, there were gaps in how the information was managed. Mm -hmm. First of all, we heard that Okadas were not, the enforcement was going to be done. Then we heard that that is not the case, it's not going to be done. And then again, we heard that, uh, okay, now, then we said, we heard it was going to be on six local governments, and later we heard 15, 15. local governments. So that aspect of it was not handled properly. Then second of all, in terms of advocacy, even when you have um, a public policy that you anticipate will um, elicit some kind of pushback. So I think that um, the government should have ramped up the amount of information they put out there. For example, I know that every month, the Commissioner of Transportation and the Governor get reports on what happens on our roads, accidents, number of accidents, causes, and all whatnot. So the government at all levels have a responsibility to take decisions based on these reports. So if the governor gets a report that, there, for example, there, there were 2,000 Okada accidents last month that required us admitting people to carry out complicated surgeries and operations. And the Commissioner of Health says we don't have the bed facility to accommodate that. Then that means the governor has a duty to respond to that. Failure to even restrict or try and curtail the amount of incidents of uh, you know, these sorts of accidents happening will mean, for example, the same Okada person, uh, personnel who are shouting today has an accident, he lands in a hospital, there's no bed space to get him, he dies out there. Then there's going to be a riot again that government is not responsive to the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. so, so, so when you're in government, there, there are a lot of information that you have that the average person out there doesn't have. So I think it behooves whoever is in government as well to be able to put as much of this information out there so that the average Lagosian and Nigerian will understand the complexity and um, the, the pool that is being put on government to respond to these uh, sundry uh, matters. Now, there we have the, the, um, the Lagos State former Commissioner for Transport, Ladi Lawasin, I mean, expressing his views about the current ban on Okada and Keke. Now, many people argue the fact that this is us not addressing the root cause of the problem, like we're just trying to take care of the shoot. Now, what do you think the Lagos State government is missing in all of this? Ihono, let's, let's go with you. I think, uh, first of all, um, there's, uh, we should differentiate between the Okadas that are well organized and those that are not. Yeah. And so we should, um, I mean, in all honesty, I think we should ban, um, um, I don't know what word to use for them, the non-company Okadas. I think they should be banned. I said total ban. But is that, is that, is that a root cause? The, apparently, uh, there, is, because, there is... Because there's a lack of education. Okay. If you're not educated, you do things in a particular way. And that's what we all go to school for, up to a certain extent. You know, there's a level you get to, it teaches you about discipline, about thinking, reasoning skills, faculty, everything. And what is the problem is that many Okada riders are not really supposed to be riding motorcycles. But is that the problem? The pro well, people argue that the real problem is that there's, there's a major gap in the transportation sector in Lagos. If there is no adequate transportation facility yes, in Lagos State as a whole. That's correct. And we can't deny the fact that this Keke mm -hmm. and Okada riders, like we call them, yes. actually, they, they provide some kind of palliative for this gap that exists. Precisely. That's yeah. why when you said, any, I, I, I was not saying that, I, I'm aware definitely that we don't have enough transportation yes. system, proper ones, buses and so on. Mm -hmm. And I know that we're not going to have enough in the next 30 years. Now you may think I'm being pessimistic, but I'm being realistic. And because of that, you must not take away the things you do to, as it were, make it work every day until you get to the point where you move. Look, We've been doing so much in this country and so little is happening. 
If I ask you today, do you really think that if we bought 25,000 buses and dumped them on the roads, that we will solve um, Lagos' problems? The answer, you're probably going to say, oh no, there will be some Nigerian factor somewhere and they will mess up those buses and it won't work in the end. Because it's going to take organization. It's not just put things there. Yeah. So I'm giving time and I'm saying that in that time, you can't exactly tell, I mean, ban this, this business of Okada and uh, Keke. Keke. Now, now Damien, what, what would be your thoughts and reaction to that? Because um, many people say the root cause of this because um, the, the transportation architecture in Lagos, there's a whole lot that still needs to be done. Oh, they'd be right. And they'd so do you see this ban or restriction as, as a solution to anything? Or it's time for the Lagos State government and its transportation department to arise to the responsibility of start putting facilities, structure in place to, 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 take, to cater for transportation in Lagos as it were. I mean, hopefully this, you know, raises the urgency on them working on long-term transportations. I mean, mass transit is definitely something that we need and it's not, you know, there is no playing around this as well. Either from the metro lines, the blue and the red lines that are meant to come on and the bus mass transit as well that, you know, has started but again, it's still wobbling and it doesn't deliver the last mile um, transportation that we need as well. Um, and then maintaining existing infrastructure is a big, big issue as well. Yeah. And it's funny that we've had a government that has struggled with maintaining existing infrastructure, um, want to sell the vision or sell the dream of saying that, you know what, we could fix mass, mass transit and make it better. But step one is taking these guys off the road as well. It's, you know, it's a very hard sell and I don't see it inspiring a lot of confidence yes. in people as well. So like we said, mass transit definitely as well. But then again, there's also the trust factor as well. Do you really trust the government to um, put into action the plans that they've um, had as well? I mean, the Lekki Ekwe Corridor is probably one major example of this as well. It's a toll road. It's not properly maintained. The lights don't often come on as well. There's still a lot of traffic on it as well. So a lot of the solutions usually put forward by the government as well um, haven't lived up to expectations. So it's hard for us to trust the government and say, oh, look, we're going to go through this short term pain because we trust that you have a bigger plan in motion as well. And that is, you know, what's severely lacking as well. If he truly thought, like he said, it's probably going to take 30 years for us to solve this. And I agree with you as well. But if I thought that, you know what, in this 30 years, they would deliver on this to a maximum standard, you know, that'd be a different ball game. But we don't see that happening as well. So this is why people are going to speak up and complain. What I worry about is that it's going to be short term. We're going to find a way to adjust and then we go ahead with our business or that these things come back and they see that these things are unenforceable. As well. Now, earlier on in the week on, on News on the Hour, we did have a, com a conversation with the Commissioner for Information and Strategy on Motor Show. And while he was speaking, addressing this current situation, the ban did say the Lagos State Government is, is waiting to, um, to take, um, to take, um, to take, um, they're expecting 100 buses and the waterways, um, they just acquired about six boats. And the question will be, how much of that will, will that solve? How much of addition would that actually be to the transportation issue in Lagos State right now? Ihono. You see, the thing about Nigeria is that we keep saying we are expecting, we are going to do. Buhari is an expert at that. I mean, I'm sorry to use his name because he's actually the president. And then we bring it down to the governors and local government chairman. We're always saying, don't worry, we are going to do this. And we never get it done, which is what you were, you've just been, your mm -hmm. comment basically is about that. Yeah. And. I, I held a symposium some time ago where I had, um, um, I, well, it's not, I, I don't want to start naming people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and castigating government officials. So anyway, we had a symposium and it was said that there were hundreds of boats already on ground and that it was just a question of getting the jetties all ready so that we can take off. Of course, the headquarters jetty, yeah. fanciful, everything is ready on, um, on, in Falomo. And um, up to today, Nothing. All we have is the governor's boat back there. Yeah, and then, yeah, the normal boats that we've been using all pass through there. Mm -hmm. But where are these beautiful boats of which we saw the prototypes? About four of them were parked at Falomo for a while. And there were supposed to be 700, 600, I don't know how many hundreds, but it was quite a lot. Where are they and why are they not delivered? The buses somebody bought. As, uh, they stayed in, in storage for ages, and when they were ready to bring it out, what did they bring out with it? They said, well, Ambody cheated when he bought them. So while we were trying to get the buses working, they were running after the ex-governor for, mm. as it were, yeah. um, increasing the cost of the buses, apparently, you know. Um, so, I mean, the whole thing is like a joke. And it's not a, it's not, it's not, it's not a joke, because transport is what moves people and mm -hmm. things. And Lagos is big. It's like London. There's no yes. difference. There's no Tokyo. That's what we are. We're, we're a mega city. 
and we're, we're, we're really yeah, maybe many people also um, took to that thought that because they're trying to make Lagos the mega city that it should be, yes. and so there's no room for such um, transportation <laughs> system, the Okadas, <laughs> the Kekena Pep, yes. That we, we, should, we should start off that we should forget the aesthetic considerations. It, it's, yeah, it's, so that, you exactly. know, forget we live aesthetics. in a state that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever gets it you working. You think Lagos doesn't work? Lagos doesn't work. Transportation-wise? <laughs> yes. It doesn't work in a lot of ways. <laughs> in a lot of other ways. <laughs> in a lot of other okay. ways. It doesn't work in health, it doesn't work in security, <laughs> and yes, it doesn't work in transportation as well. And the thing is, we have the stopgap measures that admittedly are not perfect as well. Yeah. But they're there until you have something better as well. Do not take these things out. I mean, it's literally. But isn't this a step in the right direction I, to fix to fix what the problem is? I actually do not think it's a step in the direction because this okay. is not the problem as well. These are short-term solutions that are. How do I explain it now? It's probably a symptom of a much larger disease as well. Correct. So this are this isn't the cause, but these are the things that we see and we can latch onto as well. The real hard work as well is going to start with long-term planning as well. And we keep talking about this Lagos master plan and forgive yeah. me as well, but let's <laughs> just in the you know, long-term master plan as well. Let's talk about the next four years as well. Yeah. I've, the funny thing about the jetties and the waterways is it holds a lot of potential and I actually do Honestly. emphasize Honestly. with you know, yeah. a lot of the people that run the waterways as well. Because the truth is, it's easy for you to put money into roads. You would see the roads, you'd see the commissioning as well. Yes. If you put money into dredging waterways, into building jetties, a few people would see it. And again, if I was a politician, I'd probably go for that as well. But the real hard grift and the work as well is in building sustainable infrastructure that is not happening as well. The mass transit systems, and it's not happening as well. The fact that, you know, we're not having, you know, we're not capitalizing on the fact that, you know, you could do an agile, you could see yes. both of these places exactly. as well. And yeah. the government isn't subsidizing the fact that boat transport is massively more expensive yeah. than road transport as well. Yeah. So a lot of these things have to be done. Yeah. We don't see them being done. We don't see people talking about them being done. But yet, you come up with ferocity in banning mm -hmm. these things that people survive on and people use to get around as well. I mean, it's madness. You're going yeah. to provoke people into doing things that they probably don't want to do. All right, earlier on, Plus TV took to the street to, t to get the reactions of residents um, who would who, who use this means of transportation and also the riders themselves, and this is what they had to say. I feel bad because as me now, now, I'm a student, so I use this keke to help myself to feed my family and everything. Once they want to ban this keke, if now Kadana is different, but keke is cost, it's almost equal with moto. Moto is seven, uh, one million, keke is 700,000. If they ban this keke, I will feel bad and the masses will suffer. No one made them ban our keke because this kaka with the help of this kaka that we help to manage ourselves. We the help the happy help the, with the use of the money. We happy to pay our school fees, feed our family. Like most of us here, we have family at home. Five, five and six to our children that we are feeding them. Government are not paying us. They are not doing anything for us. And they want to ban our kaka. Why? They ban our kaka. They still want to ban kaka. And we didn't want that. So please, we have to help ourselves in order to cooperate and bring our kaka back tomorrow. The issue will not hold. And do whatsoever they like, because it seems the government are pushing them to something else. That's what they are doing. They are not. They are not helping people that are willing to work. People that are ready to hustle, to to to, to survive. They are not ready to help them. Instead of that, they are, they are they are pushing them to something else. That's just it. So majority of them now have go away from Lagos. They have traveled to their their home. So those that are based in Lagos that don't have something else doing, they can easily go to stealing, robbery, and all those kind of things like that. Oh, well, it's not affecting us alone. It's affecting everybody. Ah, uh, I'm not happy at all for the ban of Okada and Marwa because it's, it's really, it's really going to affect us. We poor masses, because that is where we feed from. That's where we settle our bills on stand and for our families. Because so many of us have, have families husbands, wives, kids, understand? and this is where we feed from for now. So government should please resist from binding uh, Okada and Marwa in Lagos State, please. Because it's going, it's, it's going to be so difficult for us and some, some workers as well. Now, they have been banning Okada. During the time of Fashola, they ban Okada. Uh, they, they, that's their government rule. That's their policy. That's the agenda when Tunubu have been doing. Uh, it's the agenda of the this thing, of the party. Uh, we don't worry. It's a matter of time. It's uh, temporary. Uh, when they say Okada should not be at uh, uh, anywhere in 15 local governments, it's just a temporary. If they want to ban Okada in Lagos, they should ban the whole local government, 27. But uh, this one is just temporary. Because it's not today they have been banning Okada. During the time of Fashola, Adam Bode, all these things. 
They always band or now, but after us, we still come out and do the job. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be in this Lagos running my Okada. If you see me, ho, you still not see me, ho. I'm a soldier. Now, this, this band effect comes into being once it's past 12 midnight tonight, which is barely like six hours away. Let's, cons let's look at collateral damage. We, we saw the concerns of residents, those who use this as means of transportation. Many people argue the fact that probably the Lagos State Government didn't really go into any deliberations with the stakeholders, the necessary stakeholders, and all aspects of this was not critically looked at, like the, the economic detriments, the merits of these um, families that will be affected, the unemployment is going to create. D did you think they took into consideration all of this, as even, as even expressed by some of the views we got on the streets? Ihono? Clearly not. Um, I don't think they did. Um, I stand to be corrected. Okay. Um, the, the, you see, the, the thing is that these people have nothing else to do. And had you talked to them, there might be a way of easing this thing out. You, allow, you see, they've allowed Okada to become entrenched in our, in, in, in our lives. And so you don't ban it in four days. You take steps to ban it. I said, for instance, earlier in the program that maybe the normal Okada riders should be banned and those in companies should be pushed yeah. ahead. Yeah. That could even have been a phased way of doing things while you're working on other aspects, water, bus, all sorts of tra taxi, yeah. whatever. So really, it's not been done well. It's, it's aesthetics, that's number one. And then they've said the security issues as well. And I know that even with those, even with security. Those are valid things. concerns, though. Those are pretty valid concerns. Because um, we've had of cases where most of these guys are used to perpetrate crime at night and well, I can kidnapping okay, and all for, that. Okay. Yes. Most, a lot of crimes now are perpetrated on the internet. Do we, do, do, we, do we stop the internet because of that? That's a, that's a cyberspace and they're regulators of that now. Yes. This, this is the so same government. Trying, yeah. So I'm saying they should regulate this. For citizens. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They should regulate it with some sense. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. Dami. I, I, I absolutely agree. The sledgehammer approach to Helena Nantes is, you know, probably going to cause more troubles than it's worth as well. And we need to consider the fact that, you know, our security problems are, doesn't stem from the fact that people, you know, use... Um, or cares okay, as well. It's considered the fact that security services understaffed, underpaid, you know, untrained, and a lot of these factors as well come into play yes. as well. So if we're looking for, uh, you know, a host to flog on security as well, I, I think it's very unfair to, you know, pivots towards the Kegeza Maras. And again, I mean, this probably offers a good research as well. Let's see if we ban them and receive the crime rates drop or, yeah. you know, let's see. Or the would, you, would you ask the Lagos to go and to, to rescind on this decision? Yes, I'll ask them to look at, uh, they, first they should rescind it, yes, okay. as in it shouldn't take force tomorrow, and then they, they should look at it and phase whatever they want to do. All right, thank you, Chuka Ihono, and also Dami Adebayo for her contributions. Thank you for staying with us. We'll go for a short break, and when we return, another group is calling for the resignation of President Muhammad Buhari to stay with us.